Hello viewers, you are welcome to this video. Today I want us to look at how you can find the inverse of a function. When you are given a function and you ask to find its inverse, how do you go about it? US, the inverse of a function f is denoted this way. So when you see this one, it means the inverse of a function f. The inverse of the function f. If you have a function g, then its inverse is written this way. If you have a function h, this inverse is written this way. Okay. Now, question number one. Given that f is under s mass onto 1 over s plus 5. s not equal to negative 5. Because if s is equal to negative 5, there will be 0 and to be 1 over 0 and 5. Okay. Given this, find the inverse function. The inverse function this. I use it of f, can say of f. Solution. You see, this is a function. So we have f of x, x mass on 1, x plus 5. This is what it means. What this means is that when x is equal to 1, I use it. When you put 1 here, you are going to get 1 over 6. When s is equal to 2, when you put 2 here, you are going to get 1 over 7. When s is equal to 3, you are going to get 1 over 8. In that order. So, you want to get a function that can help us to get the pre images of the elements here. This is it. Now, these are the, the images of the elements here. The image of 1 is 1 over 6. The image of 2 is 1 over 7. The image of 3 is 1 over 8. Do you see? So you want, if when you are here, and you want to come back, how do you go back? Do you see it? So if you want the pre-image of 1 over 6, or if you want the, the, the element which is related to one, 1 over 6, which is 1, how do you do it? So there's a need to get a function that can help us to get back to these uh, uh, elements. Because only here you can get here using this function. So how do you get back? And to get back, you need to find the inverse. Isn't it? Okay. So let's look at it. So how do you find the inverse? So this is the function that I have been given. And we are saying that x should not be equal to negative 5. Now, this is the same as f of x. Eh? And f of x is the same as y. This is equal to 1 over x plus 5. So, you can say that y is equal to, y is equal to 1 over x plus 5. Because f of x is the same as y. Now, at this point, this is what you are going to do, viewers. When you ask to find the inverse, what you do is that you interchange the x and y values. Wherever you see y, you put x there. And wherever you see x, you put y there. So if you do that, this one will be x. You have seen y, and I'm replacing it with x. 1 over, I've seen x, I'm replacing it with y this is the first step us after doing this then you make y the subject you make y the subject us i have a video on change your subject so those of you who do not understand change your subject you can go and watch it it's a very powerful video on change your subject yes okay so i have it this way i also have a video on what is a function what is a function i have a video on it i have another video on what are Injective, subjective, and bijective functions. If you have not watched those videos, US, you are advised to go and watch them. Okay, so that is it. So at this point, you are going to make y the subject. Now, this one is the same as over 1. So this is x over 1, this is equal to 1 plus this. That will be this way. Now, let's cross multiply. Hmm? 
If you cross multiply, then you really have something like this. X will multiply Y plus 5, and this will go to 1. I see it. When you expand, you're getting x, y plus 5x to equal to 1. Viewers, don't forget, you want to make y the subject. So if you are making y the subject, then this should go to the other side. So x, y is equal to 1 minus 5x. So when this cross was to be negative 5x. Now, I want to make y the subject, so you can divide both sides by x. So if you do that, y will be equal to 1 minus 5x all over x. And you can see that x will not be equal to 0. Therefore, you see that we have to find the inverse of this. Therefore, f inverse is equal to 1 minus 5x all over x. x not equal to 0. So this will be the inverse of this function. When x is equal to 1, each image will be 1 over 6, if you put 1 here. When i is equal to 2, this image will be 1 over 7. And when i is equal to 3, this image will be 1 over 8, isn't it? Now, so there was a need to get a, a function, which is the, the, the inverse of f, that can help us to get back the three images of these elements here. That is, when we are here, how will we know that 1 over 6 is related to 1. So let's check it. Now that I am able to get a function, we are going to put 1 over 6 in this function to check whether you get back 1. When you finish, you put 1 over 7 here and check whether you are going to get 2. Now, here, if you put 1 over 6 here, we are still going to go in place of x. If you put 1 over 6 here, this will be 1 minus, if you are putting 1 over 6 here, that will be 5 over 6. 5 times 1 over 6. All over. Don't forget x is 1 over 6. Now, 1 minus 5 over 6. This one is the same as uh, 6 over 6. So that would be 1 over 6. Divided by 1 over 6. And straight away, this is 1. You see it? And this has given us this one. Now, let's check the next one. The next one. When s is equal to 1 over 7. We are going to have 1 minus 5 times 1 over 7, that is 5 over 7. Over x is 1 over 7, so over 1 over 7. Now this one is the same as 7 over 7 minus 5 over 7, all over 1 over 7. Now 7 over 7 minus 5 over 7, we only have 2 over 7, over 1 over 7. Are you seeing it? And it is the same as 2 over 7. Divided by 1 over 7, that is times 7 over 1. 7 will cancel 7. 2 over 1 is the same as 2. And you will actually check it. This is 2. So in the same way, if you put 1 over 8 in this function, you are going to get this. So this tells us that this is indeed the inverse of this function. We need to understand all this. Yes. Okay. Now, let's quickly look at the last question on this and bring this lecture to an end. Now, solution. Solution, I've been giving this. So, g of x is equal to, is the same as y, is equal to x squared plus 4. Are you seeing it? Now, so it means that y is equal to x squared plus 4. We have told you that to find the inverse of a function, the first thing you have to do is to interchange the x and y values. So, interchanging x and y values. We are going to get x is equal to y squared plus 4. Are you it? And at this point, we are going to make y the subject. Make y the subject. So this one will be x minus 4 is equal to y squared. y is equal to square root of x minus 4. Yes. So is it? So therefore, G inverse eh, of x is equal to square root of x minus 4. Wait. Now, let's look at what is happening. You see, this is a function. So, what this function means is that when x is equal to say 1, 
then this image, when you put one here, you are going to get five. When that is equal to two, when you put two here, two squared will be four plus four, eight. When that is equal to three, when you put three here, three squared is nine plus four, thirty. Now, from what you have obtained here, it means that you should be able to use this one so that when you are here, we can get back to these numbers. This is so let's let's check it. When you put five here, five minus four will be one. Square root of one is one. Are you it? When you put eight here, eight minus four is four. Square root of four is two. See that you are getting the two. When you put thirteen here, thirteen minus four is nine. Square root of nine is three. So this means that this is indeed the inverse of this function. Yes, so it's not even called at all, US. It's not even called at all. Thank you very much for your attention. For more of this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Shamala Jr.